my dad got his first smartphone. He was about 60 years old. I think he like Googled something for the first time. And uh, <laughs> he came to me and he was like, man, there ain't nothing left to find out. You can know whatever you want to know on this thing. And I just thought that was really funny. And you know, I started thinking about um, the ease, you know, of information and how easily we can pick up on something. And there isn't really anything left to find out. And finding it out was like half of the fun, you know, right. like learning something, you know, where now like, you know, you can just watch a YouTube video. The same thing like applies to artists, any artist, whether it's a filmmaker, yeah. whether it's a musician, singer, songwriter, like the lessons that you learn yourself mm -hmm. that aren't just given to you, but earned. Totally. Uh, I mean, they're irreplaceable. Levi Parham is a musician hails out of Haywood, Oklahoma, not far from McAllister. He's a singer-songwriter who's traveled the world with his songs and lived a few stories on the way. Over the last year, he's played on stages in Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Germany, and he just completed his latest album, It's All Good. He's laid back and he's earnest, funny on the surface and wise just beneath that. The first time I met him, we traded stories, argued over beers, compared jean jackets and talked politics and hope. His music sounds like summertime dusk on a Christmas light lit porch, feet burning in your flip flops and a good sunburn on her shoulders. It's a little bluesy and a lot folksy, a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. It's hard not to smile listening to it. it sounds like every good party you've ever been to that might involve a campfire or a lake or a pool hall. You get the feeling he's singing for you, but at the same time he's talking to himself. And that makes it easy to believe him. I was always in love with music as far back as I can really remember. I started play taking piano lessons when I was maybe 11. You know, that that was a lot of fun, and, but it just wasn't, uh, wasn't cool. So I picked up the guitar when I was probably 14 and, and yeah, never looked back after that. I mean, I remember writing songs about Saturday morning cartoons and crap like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that felt like it was kind of just there, you know, just felt natural. Mm -hmm. And I was never naturally good at anything, you know. I was terrible at sports. <laughs> you know, I couldn't, I couldn't talk to girls, you know. Right. And um, music was kind of like, just felt natural, like it was my voice. I never really second thought it after that. I don't think I really gave anything else a chance after that. It felt good, and I, I, I felt like I could do it, and, and it was fun. Yeah. So how old were you when you had your first band? I was about 15. Yeah? Yeah. What was the name of it? I joined a band with some seniors, and there, it was called Been Out of Shape. Okay. And uh, I, was, I felt so cool because I was with all these, like, you know, older kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and my buddy, he played drums. We played this show, and they were going to let me do one song, and I was going to sing, you know, and do it acoustic. It's your big chance. That's right? my big chance, right? right? <laughs> And uh, I go up there, and we had a DJ. They had a DJ that was, like, playing in between songs, you know? And uh, I get up there, and I'm starting to play this, like, I think it was a Counting Crows song. Uh, round here, yeah, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. You know, 15 years old, just screeching voice, you know, round here. It was horrible. Uh -huh. And uh, they turned the DJ on <laughs> over me. <laughs> and uh, I got kind of booed off stage. <laughs> So, so yeah, I stuck to gu guitar for a while after that. Having kind of a local influence. Tell me a little bit about 
Lee. One of my dad's best friends. He was a um, he was a long range trucker. Went all over the place. Had seen everything. And um, he was kind of a studier. You know, read every book and also wrote songs, and just had wild, crazy stories. You know, mm -hmm. wore snakeskin boots like what you got on yeah. and sleeveless T-shirts and you know, fought with bikers and <laughs> you know, just a crazy, just a crazy guy. And yeah. I. I, I think that um, it was always sort of romantic, the idea of, like, hitting the road and mm -hmm. writing songs and, mm -hmm. and doing whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. it seemed free, you know. So did he teach you a little bit of guitar? He, he taught me a little bit of guitar. I mean, he was always gone, so it, he, he wasn't, like, around all the time. But, but when he was around, he would show me some stuff. And he, would, he got into video at this weird time. And uh, this is maybe 15 years ago. And, we tried to shoot some video one day, and I was, you know, maybe 17, and I was really trying to kind of croon into the, uh, into the, in the camera, and he was just like, I don't want to do all that <laughs> crap. He was like, just feel it, you know? Right, right. And um, see, so he taught me a lot about just, um, just being real and, and doing your thing and, and not giving a crap about anything, mm -hmm. just, just giving it all you got. Honestly, what influences me the most right now is um, my friends, you know, really? my peers, yeah. Um, stuff that, that is coming out of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you know, people that I've met on the road. That's what inspires me the most right now is there's so much music, you know, mm -hmm. coming out right now. How has being an Oklahoman uh, affected your songwriting, uh, your, your song performance, all of it? I think that I'm influenced greatly by history and, and backstories of people and the places around here, but mm -hmm. then it always comes out as a love song. So, like, if you listen to my music, it's all just I'm singing about love, but, but, but I'm sort of sneaking in little tidbits of, of where I'm from mm -hmm. or, or what, what I was around at that time. As a filmmaker, right? Anytime somebody comes in from L.A. or New York... We've got to assume, well, they know more than we do, or, the, or their, their existence is much be some, so much more interesting than ours. Yeah. And then and you feel that maybe for a little while as you're trying to find who you are, get on your feet, uh, you know, and, and then you realize where you're from, the beauty, the difficulty, the tragedy of, of being from here, and you realize right. that our experiences as Oklahomans or living in small town Oklahoma, yeah. Main Street, whatever, uh, are just as valid and just as valuable and just totally. as interesting. So... I think that every small town kid, you know, in, living in rural America, dreams of, of going to places like L.A. or mm -hmm. New York or, you know, kind of searching outside of this little space that, you know, there's this big world out there. And then you come to find out much, you know, years later, at least I did, that there's some really cool stuff right in your backyard yeah. and things that, um, that the other side is looking at, you know. People who grew up in that environment sort of romanticize this one. Woods County, Oklahoma. Outlaw there named Badass Bob. He ain't the type to run a hold up. He makes friends just to cheat them and rob them. He said, Nobody got nothing. So tell me, like, what's next for you? What's going on now? I got a new album coming out in uh, June. We went down to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, mm -hmm. to record this album, which is a pretty, you know, it's a pretty iconic place. Mm -hmm. um, Fame Studios and Muscle Shoals Sound. Um, and actually, the place we recorded in is, it was the second home of Muscle Shoals Sound. So, you know, Bob Dylan recorded there, Bob Seeger, Leonard Skinner, Allman Brothers, Bonnie Raitt. 
I mean, the list goes on. Johnny Winter, mm-hmm. um, you had Cher. Me at, you had me at Dylan. Gonna stop <laughs> What's the name? It's called It's All Good. Um, the whole concept was, um, you know, no matter what's going on, you know, it's all good. No, you know, <laughs> you know look on the bright side right. kind of thing. Right. And, um, yeah, I was kind of dealing with some stuff at the end of the year. I had a really great year last year and went out on tour and came home and I just was sort of trying to digest everything that I'd kind of taken on and mm-hmm. and and was kind of getting sort of down in the mouth about stuff. And, and uh, one of the songs on the album is called It's All Good. And the whole premise is like, hey, no matter what, you're living, you're breathing, you woke up today, it's all good. And so that's kind of the concept behind this album. We probably need a little bit of that. Yeah, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when life gets to bringing me down, call my friends and I know they come around. Things don't always be like they could. Oh, and it's all good. <laughs> you are touring mm-hmm. like a madman. You've played yeah, pretty, everywhere, in a lot of places. Yeah. It's pretty it's, amazing. Yeah, well, it's been a lot of fun, and I've had a lot of really cool opportunities. But the last three years, I've been solid on the road. And, um, you know, it's so easy to... Not easy, but it's fairly easy to put put a whole tour together. And guys are sort of um, missing step one and two, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and often, I think, it sets up people for disappointment because what I've found from, like, going on the road is that it still takes the time mm-hmm. you you yeah you can use the internet and social media to gain fans and to gain attention but it still takes you know toughing it out mm-hmm. you know, hitting the road going to the places playing for the people so it's, sometimes i think people set themselves up for a little bit of disappointment when they are kind of going with this new wave of information and and still have to sort of put the time in you right. know well there's a real value in um failing yeah, totally. And like learning on your own and getting yeah. back up as opposed to just having it handed to you. Totally. And you have such a great sense of confidence and mm-hmm. sense of self. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have those two things, you just, it, it's hard to be successful in any art form. Mm-hmm. You have to really know what you're doing, feel good about it, and, and be sure of yourself. Now that we've talked about the value of like learning it yourself, I want right. to, like, let me steal from you. What's something that you've learned? Everywhere is is everywhere and everybody is everybody and what i mean by that is that you can be in rome you could be in amsterdam new york or just right here in McAllister, oklahoma and you're gonna find people who need the same things who want the same things who are trying to go about their lives in the same way and so it, it's, that was a real eye-opener for me to realize that we're not so different that everybody is pretty similar and we may come from a different place and it may have a little different scenery but we're all really kind of in this together after the interview mike's off and camera packed away levi told me that the year he cut his first album a huge moment in any musician's journey was the same year the ink on his divorce paper dried and that was the same year his mom passed away Levi said he was staring in his 30s and surrounded by these huge, life-changing moments. He, he realized he had to live, and he got busy living. Music makes no sense the way the best kind of magic doesn't either. It's sorcery and needs no logic or explanation. There's complete mystery in the way that the right sounds, the right tones, the right words thrown together in just the right pattern, at the right pace, in the right moment can reach into your chest and take your breath, grasp your secret heart, and turn guitar-strumming strangers into people reading your diary aloud. Music, inexplicable and true, heals us and liberates us, and in the moments where we allow it to, it connects us across all of our lines and lives, across our parties and our faiths. According to Levi, we aren't so different, you and me. We're all in this together, he says. And I believe him. Music played right can turn you and me into us. And we can make it wherever we're going. Kiss me in the morning. Love me through the day. Call me this evening. Say you said when I'm awake. 
Baby, kiss me in the morning. 